I save coffee and tea grounds and use them around my plants. Um, ants don't like coffee grounds very much. Even in a high tunnel, you can get ants. So I like to be able to put stuff in here just as a deterrent. And uh, plus it feeds them. I use Ticino lots of times, which is not really coffee. It is an herbal tea type thing, a coffee substitute. So there you have your coffee in an herbal form. So none of that is going to hurt your plants. It's actually going to help. So coffee and tea grounds, something else that you can use in your garden. Hey guys, welcome to Deep South. I'm Wanda and today we're in my queen dome. It's a high tunnel that Danny's kind of turned into a greenhouse by putting solid in walls on each end. Today we're going to be talking about homemade fertilizers. Next year they're saying there's going to be a shortage of fertilizer. So if I say fertilize instead of fertilizer, y'all forgive me I'm in the south and sometimes we drop letters at the end of our words. But fertilizer is what you plant or use with your plants to create nutrients so they grow better. And we're all used to buying organic or commercial fertilizer. When you fertilize your plants, you are spreading that in the soil to help give it the nutrients that the plant's already taken out. So, today we're going to talk about some things that was laid on my heart one night while I was sleeping, early morning, whatever you want to say. I got these thoughts going through my head and I woke up and I, all of them were just racing everywhere. And, and so I got up, went straight to the kitchen, Danny's cooking, and I grab a piece of paper and I start writing. And I have my notes. Just because if you see me look down, I do have a jotted down bunch of notes here because I needed them. The thoughts were just flowing like crazy. And I thought, well, I'll get that done. Well, it's been a week and a half, and I haven't gotten it done yet. But this morning, when I woke up, all these thoughts were flowing through my head again. I thought I'd just, you know, go with the flow. You guys, you know me. I'm going to be me. And we're going to talk about the natural ways that came to my mind of what we can do. Because, hey, you can't depend on anybody. We have so many people saying, I'm getting this from, I'm going and getting that here if something happens and you cannot get fertilizer, you got to depend on yourself. You got to depend on what is on your homestead. You can't say I'm going to go to town and get because you might not can. And I'm talking even farms. So we're going to get into this and talk a little bit about what you need to watch out for a little bit. And this is one to simplified version. Don't get I don't get technical. We're not going to get all crazy here. So and at the end, I'll let you tour my high tunnel and see what I've got going on November the 20th growing in this uh, high tunnel here and it's amazing I grew all summer and if you'd like to see what I grew in the summer it's on crazy days that is my channel where I show things that I do uh, separate from deep south uh, so this high tunnel pretty much has been predominantly on crazy days all summer I've been growing all summer long and had lots of wonderful results now most everybody knows about compost, okay? It's been composted to death. You can go look. There's plenty of people talking about compost, what to compost, what not to compost. We're really not going to go there today. Um, anything that I talk about today can be composted. You can do it. That's, that's a, compost is good. Um, but compost is not where we're going today exactly. We're going to talk about the things that I saw and the things that are in my house and around my house that I can use because I can't go anywhere. Say, hey, look, you cannot, absolutely cannot leave your place to go anywhere. Think like that with this. So compost is great. Uh, David the Good has a book out called Compost Everything. It's a good little book. You can buy it. It tells you what you can and can't compost. Pretty much you can compost anything. The next thing animal poop. We get this all the time, animal poop. And along with that, we're going to talk about human poop too, but we'll get there. Um, animal poop. Rabbit poop is usually one of your best. You can put it on your plants and it doesn't affect them. It doesn't burn them. 
Uh, usually we put it a little away from our plants. We had rabbits for about two, two and a half years here, and it was amazing what we saw the difference using rabbit poop. You don't usually have to worry unless you feed your rabbit something that has chemicals in it. Um, most rabbits eat green stuff and, you know, you might give them some pellets, but again, usually not anything that has chemicals in it. So you're usually pretty safe with rabbit poop. Chicken poop. You're feeding them a lot of seeds. Uh, the grains, the stuff they eat, anything that has seeds in it, if they're free ranging, they're eating the seeds off of weeds, you use that chicken poop, you're going to get weeds. Just gonna say, you're gonna get weeds. Uh, we um, use some of ours and some of the things that was in the feeds and some of the things that they picked up in the yards ended up in our gardens. So weeds is gonna be a problem with chicken poop. You cannot use that like fresh out of the chicken coop into um, the garden. It has to be composted somewhat and done down the road. Horse, cow, goat, pig, whatever, but mainly let's deal with horses, goats, cows, sheep. Lots of people want to know, can we use that? Well, yeah, sure. As long as you know you have not fed them something that, um, some chemical. We used ours and we screwed up, just gonna say. Um, we had a barn full of sheep and goat manure. We took it all out. We dumped it on our front garden and for two years we wondered what in the world. Our English peas usually grew huge, produced abundantly. They grew huge and we were thinking, wow. And all of a sudden the leaves started curling. We couldn't figure it out. Two years in a row, green beans did the same. Could not figure it out till we built the high tunnel in 2020. And Danny put some of our uh, goat manure or cow manure, one of the two, in one side of his greenhouse, our high tunnel. And the tomatoes were amazing. I'm gonna tell you, they were beautiful. You can go back and watch the videos. But all of a sudden they started curling. The leaves started curling and he went to investigate. What in the world? They're, they were overhead high, loaded with tomatoes. I'm the biggest, prettiest tomatoes you've ever seen but the leaves were curling. We found out hay sprayed with Grazon goes through the animals, you put it into your uh, gardens and it kills your plants. It won't really kill them, it'll deform them and uh, eventually they will die. Um, they'll get big and beautiful from the fertilizer. fertilizer. Sorry about that. They'll get big and beautiful from the fertilizer, the poop, but then the grazon kicks in and starts causing those beautiful plants to die. We had so many people this past couple of years say, that's exactly what happened to mine. So if you're gonna use animal poop, watch what animal poop you use. And Danny has a grazon video up. Human poop, let's talk about that. You know what you eat, so if you're gonna use your poop, you know that you may need to compost it, but if you, take medications, drink, eat, whatever, smoke, I don't care, whatever you do, that goes in, that comes out, right? So you know, be careful. If you're gonna put it into your ground, whatever comes out goes into that ground. Whatever's going in is coming out and going back into your ground. Very simple. Pay attention, if you're gonna use it, you better know what you're putting into this before you put this in your ground. Just saying. Danny and I started worm bins. Okay, so we have worm poop. Worm, worms is great. Worm poop, worm whatever, is a wonderful way to have a tea or use the ground, it sift your worms out, start over, and use the dirt. It is excellent. Our ground out here already has lots of worms. We find them in the garden all the time, so we're pretty okay with that in the garden outside and we found them in our tunnels, both of them in different places. So we know we're doing something right when you have worms in your soil. So, but there are good worms and bad worms, know the difference. Now we built two ponds last year and our whole purpose with the ponds, one was to, the front one was to water the cows, um, but we also wanted fish to eat. Then we wanted the dish emulsion you know, you can buy that stuff, it stinks. Good, good um, fertilizer stinks. I'm gonna tell you, fertilizer usually stinks. I I'm just gonna say, but 
I can go out my high tunnels. My pond, pond in the back is right here. I can go dip out some water, come in here and fertilize all this with my pond water. So that way they're getting the fishy poop, the slime, the whole nine yards. They're getting fertilizer. That is a perfect way. If you have a pond, be thinking in those terms of using that water to water whatever. Danny also has a pump that will pump the water up here from the pond that we hope to have installed soon so that we don't have to go down there and dip water and come up here. Most of these things people have already covered and I get that. Danny and I talk about jadam a lot. It's a Korean way of organic gardening for ultra low cost gardening. They use the leaves, the fruits or veggies, things like that from the plants and they put it back into a uh, mixture with leaf mold and Danny has a video on leaf mold and they mix it up in water and then they use that water to fertilize their plants again. So Danny and I have been kind of incorporating that somewhat into what we're doing. Um, right now one thing we're doing is chop and drop. A lot of people like to chop and drop. When we have leaves or berries or fruits or uh, veggies that are not fit to eat, we're dropping them back in the soil and covering it and letting it just decompose in the soil to feed the plant that it's around. Our banana tree is a perfect example. Danny's been taking the banana leaves and cutting off the bottom leaves as they kind of die back and he's putting them around the banana in the container he has. And you ought to see the difference. This year we have bananas and the roots are coming and they're trying to grab at stuff that's coming up at the top. They love it. They love having their own source of energy going back into them. This is kind of the way I look at it. So the ultra low cost, you can order a Jadam book or you can watch them online uh, on YouTube and they tell step by step how to make this stuff. It is amazing and it will work. We've got lots of people now trying it because it is a way to use what you have at home. You can't leave your place, remember? We're not leaving our place. We're staying at home and we're going to be finding things at our house to use. This is what came to me the other night. All these are things that you probably already know. Dishwater. Okay, back in the day my granny always had a, a dish pan and she washed her dishes in that dish pan and then she rinsed them and put them up and she took that dish pan water and went outside and watered her plants and I never thought much about it. Now you don't want to use dish soap so heavy or so chemical laden that you can't use it. I wouldn't pour it on my plants but she poured it around the ground. It helps with um, the bugs and stuff but it also, any food particles that come off that plate goes in that dishwasher. And when you dump it out, you're dumping particles of food that might have been stuck on a plate or a pot or anything around the plant. So just know dishwater can be used. Um, lots of people don't know what a dishpan is, but it can be used, it can be beneficial, and that's something you need to think about in the future. Do I need to cut back on the amount of soap you use maybe or change the type of soap you use look at the chemicals that's in the dish soap and decide which one is best for you or if you make your own soap is even better now this one was was the biggie this is what woke me up I think my jars that I canned all my jars now lots of times when I'm gonna uh, drain the jar whatever vegetables in it and I don't need the juice for what I'm uh, fixing to cook. I can use the juice for soups. I can use it for feeding the animals. We've got pigs and we pour it over in their slop thing if I'm not going to use it for anything. But the juice can be used to cook rice and um, quinoa and lentils and stuff. It doesn't matter. Any veggie juice. Like if you open a jar of carrots or green beans or peas or potatoes or whatever. You can dump all that juice out into a pot and cook your rice and stuff. So that's kind of a survival tip 101 here too. Uh, you don't have water, use the juice from your veggies that you've canned to cook your rice and stuff. But my thought was if you don't need it for all that, use it to water your plants. You can use that veggie juice. And if you want to 
put some leaf mold in the veggie juice and all that stuff together and let it ferment for a few days. Jadam 101 coming in. We're, we're taking a twist on the Jadam just a little. Um, even like when you've cooked your meals or your, um, after the meal when you're finished, any of your scraps, any of that stuff can be used either to feed your animals or if you've got the juice like um, maybe your turnip greens, different things like that. Anything that has a lot of juice left, everybody eats all the veggies but they leave the juice, you can use that for fertilizer. Just keep that in mind over the next few years. Now a lot of people like to make eggshell tea and things like that so when you have a lot of eggs and you use them for everything you know to use the eggshells for, you can crush these eggshells up, put them in water, and let them sit. Now I had an elderly lady tell me this is one of the things that she used on all her plants and uh, I did it for a while but again true fertilizer stinks. I'm gonna tell you you leave eggshells in water for a while they're gonna get a little smelly and you can keep adding eggshells and you can keep adding water and you can keep making your I mean it's, it's a process it just keeps going but it is a good way to have um, a fertilizer on hand. Another thing when you're in the kitchen um, you haven't thought about maybe is the blood from the meat. When you open a package that has uh, meat in it usually always there's blood there. You can rinse that into a, a container and save that blood for using as blood type uh, meal I guess. Instead of blood meal you would have liquid but when you rinse that paper and that meat and that stuff, you get little pieces of um, like where they've cut it. All that could go into a container and you can use that. Because when, when meat thaws out, you always have the blood dripping out of it. So you want to be able to use everything you have on your homestead, use it. Pour it into your compost pile, pour it into a container with your Jadam stuff and use it as um, with the compost tea that you're making or just simply take it and pour it on the plant around the plant. You gotta you gotta use wisdom because some of it needs to be composted, some of it can be poured on. You'll have to check all that on your own. And fireplace ashes. They're perfect for your garden, perfect for your animals and stuff. You can always use fireplace ashes. Learn which ones can go on your plants immediately. Learn which ones you need to compost for a while. Um, that's for another video guys, but I'm just giving you some thoughts on what I was thinking about every day I see around my house that I could use for fertilizer when there is none available or there's limited available. Now it's hard to do this on a huge garden like Danny and I do, the gardens outside. It's really hard to use that much stuff, but it's doable. Now that we have hay that has not been sprayed with Grazon, our cows we can use their poop. Um, that was one of our biggest goals in the past year was to get our cows cleaned out and our uh, hay, a good hay where we knew it had not been sprayed. That's our goal to have that plus the ponds and the fish fertilizer. That's, that's our biggest goals here to use on our big fields. Now the High tunnels and stuff, it's easier to, to make minute amounts and pour in here and, and use. Anytime you have a small area, you can um, create a fertilizer a lot easier. But when you're doing fields, that's where the commercial fertilizers came in and that's where um, the problems are arising now. Uh, it takes a lot to do a field, you know. So guys, I'm going to take you around and show you a few things here in my high tunnel and show you what I've got going on and um, if you're interested in a high tunnel right now this is November the 20th I think through November the 30th Growers Solution I'll put a link in the description is having a huge sale check it out I'm gonna put all the details in the sale this is a six, 16 by 36 and Danny's is a 16 by 36 and our third high tunnel I think is a 24 by 30 or something like that so we've got three huge high tunnels on our property, but we're just going to look around really quick in Wanda's Queen Dome. I planted these mums in here, and they are just a beautiful focal point 
to this whole high tunnel. Now my cucumbers did not do well. I planted them really late in the fall and I just took them out. I got like three cucumbers off of them. The plants grew to the ceiling. Just wasn't beneficial. So we're going to get greenhouse cucumbers now that are set to grow in a greenhouse. I have a little bit of ginger behind there. Um, we have onion chives and wild lettuce. And I did put a tea tree plant in here. And we're going to see if uh, I can't get a tea tree growing here in this back corner. I have my plant here. It just keeps producing and producing and producing. And these things are gorgeous. I just love the color in this flower. Then I have a peppercorn. I have a peppercorn on all four corners of the um, trellis in the two rows that I have. This one has grown to right here. And then I have my cotton plant. This cotton plant sat here all summer and did not really do anything. But look, it's been putting on um, blooms. One right down there that just finished. This is the first cotton bowl. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? I'm growing cotton in my high tunnel. I love it. And so we've got like here, here. I mean, they're growing everywhere. So that is just absolutely beautiful have cotton growing in my high tunnel now this is an eggplant it sat here all summer did not do anything but look at here I don't know if it's gonna make eggplants or not but look at it and it's come back out at the ground so maybe the eggplants gonna like it in the winter I mean I have one right here I think it's amazing I didn't get anything off of it all year but look at it that's that's just awesome now over here I planted potatoes they haven't coming up come up yet we're gonna try and grow potatoes in here just regular potatoes I think it's fingerling potatoes but regular potatoes in this place I planted some English peas green peas whatever and you can see they're coming up they're starting to put their little things on and over there these are the trail of tears you go back and watch my video on trail of tears that came up volunteer. This one came up volunteer. I'm not taking them down. I'm going to let them go. So I've got English peas, trail of tears, and look at my tomatoes. These are the blue tomatoes. I found them outside in the carrot bed, dug them up, brought them in. I think I have three plants in here right now. It's amazing. I took all the leaves off my Red Ripper peas. We're going to see if they do like the trail of tears and come back out. And I see green stuff coming in places so these have grown and produced and I have eaten out of these quite a bit this summer and I took all the leaves off that was bad and we're gonna see if they come back out um, I do see new growth so we're gonna see if it doesn't get too 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 cold in the next little while on this side like I said potatoes but yet I've got the Egyptian walking onions another um flower this one flower is similar to the one up front then i have miss lippies um this is a kind of a weird aloe and it has just took off and made babies and it's doing great here this is my original peppercorn that someone sent me everybody always asks where i got it but somebody sent me the plant and look at this i mean amazing and it's done grown so big and it's going up and we've got it to the top of the rail and I've got a string but when it turns cold now this is a tropical plant and it doesn't like the cold that well got a tub of petunias here y'all I don't think you can kill these little things they'll come back and grow and grow and grow so I've had petunias all year in my greenhouse and on this side, I have a few Egyptian walking onions. Here I have a lantana. I just kind of tied it up because it kept getting out into the way. And this is my other um, peppercorn. And you can see the color, the deep, dark green color. And this one has started going up my um, rope here, my string. So it's headed in the direction I want. I have three vertical planters from Greenstalk. Um, 
this one has flowers in it that I just left and they're still living but they're kind of iffy in places you can see back there's one peeking out but this one is doing pretty decent I've got a few flowers here and there but in the top I planted potatoes these are fingerling potatoes they don't grow real big and you look at them look at the color isn't that amazing I tried this in the spring and had didn't have good luck because of a few issues we're trying again but green stocks having a sale too check them out I'll try to put a link in the description they're having an amazing Black Friday sale if you've ever wanted one now's the time it's gonna be huge huge discounts on green stocks but look at my potatoes Danny has planted rutabagas in here and he was afraid they wouldn't do anything but they're trying so we're gonna see with the rutabagas if we get any in a high tunnel another tea tree plant that I put in a pot trying to get it on up before I plant it more flowers more Egyptian walking onions and starved David okra I'm letting it go to seed in here because there is no other okra in here and uh, we'll have more star of David okra but I grew quite a bit of okra on three plants in my greenhouse this year now all this little green stuff you see here that is English peas or green peas as you want to call them they are all starting to put on their little runners so before long I'm hoping to have them going up my trellis here and this is Danny's little spot here look at this we are growing carrots in my greenhouse this was my original intent was to grow carrots all year long in my greenhouse and when I plant them they don't come up but Danny's got two beds here of carrots that are doing pretty amazing this is one of my spots this is my turmeric and ginger a little bit of ginger in there with it uh, we will dig this up shortly because you can see the turmeric leaves are starting to turn color and yes you can use the leaves if you wanted to for whatever now the ginger I've got two different types of ginger in there and uh, we'll be digging all that up within a couple of weeks probably this cold spell that's coming may kind of knock them back this is my other green stalk it has strawberries in it we're gonna down the strawberries and take the babies off because it's got babies hanging all over the place here and we're going to take them off and down it to one plant per thing because November's a time that we redo strawberries so this one is sitting here with strawberries in it and the top has potatoes and you see my potatoes are just growing up tall and doing what they need to do so I hope today has been a blessing to each one of you it was things that came to my mind about homemade fertilizers when we can't leave our homestead get in your mind you're not going nowhere you're not going to buy nothing that's what I was trying to go for not that we can run to the store and buy something or we can go to a farm somewhere and buy something because you don't know with these commercial farms whether it's a horse farm um, they grow veggies whatever unless you know the owner and you know they do not use chemicals if they don't use chemicals go for it anything you can get for free or a little a little bit of money not much is a good deal but do not buy from just commercial type farms I, mean, I would just say that just don't um, it's not worth ruining your land and then trying to figure out how to fix it later so guys I've got to go I got to edit I've got to cook I've got all kinds of things going on in the house Danny's got things going on over at the cabin and um, we just got projects we're always doing things here at Deep South and we love to take you along and I'll try to remember to put the links to the things I've mentioned that are on sale down in the description check them out remember to keep your eyes open everywhere on your place for what you can use as a fertilizer you don't have to buy everything you can space space out what you bought and make it last longer if you can create your own just remember really good fertilizer stinks thank you guys from deep south homestead